had a guest come into my chair and she wanted a shag haircut. Immediately, as hairstyles, we are so excited, right? Because we get to have fun, we get to do something different, out of the box. And so I'm like, oh yeah, come on, let me help you out. So she sat in the chair and I was cutting away, adding all these layers, all these textures. And when I showed her the final product, she was like, oh, you know, I like it, but I'm not really seeing the texture. And so I told her, okay, no big deal, you know? We work with the feedback. And so I went in, cut more texture, cut more layers, and just kept going back and forth. And eventually I took a step back and I realized, okay, all we have done is just completely thinned out the hair, lost the shape. And what I once thought was such an easy haircut that could be done in some boyfriend's garage band <laughs> was something that's gonna be having to have a little bit more precision and work to get it just right for our clients. So I want to start off by thanking you so much for being here because showing up, investing a little bit of time into your education shows your dedication to your craft and will always set you apart. Um, I want to also thank Salon Republic for having us on today. I am so excited to be here. My name's Sarah, I'm a Moroccan oil educator, and today we're gonna be going over our Jagged Jet haircut, which is a Joan Jet inspired haircut. And so I am so excited to go in this. We're going to create this super fun shag on our beautiful model today, as well as a really heavy um, dramatic curtain fringe. So if you're ready, let me know down in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a, ooh, let's go. <laughs> All right, so I am going to start off by sectioning out a horseshoe section on the top here. So I'm going to bring over my mannequin a little closer here. And starting off at that recession point, I am just drawing a line straight back. And I can see I've gone a little bit high, so I'm just gonna take that a little bit lower. And you'll notice that I am checking my work in the camera here. That's both for you to see, so you can see clearly, but that's also to gain perspective. So think, what is a way that we can kind of get that perspective when we aren't in front of the camera and we are in the salon with our clients? Mirrors, right? It is incredible to always be using a mirror when you are cutting. It is so easy to get lost in one single section that when we take a step back and we look at things as a whole, then we're like, oh shoot, something's off, right? So always be using your mirror and that's why I'm gonna be using my camera here today. So I'm gonna kind of spin her around a little bit and I can see a little bit of that unevenness. So we're just gonna clean that up. Perfect. Spinning her back around here. Quickly, we'll just create a nice top knot here. Spin that around. Perfect. Now, what I want to do is I want to start on our internal layers. So our internal layers is everything that's going to be basically underneath the surface of the hair. So this is what's gonna help give some movement and direction. So starting in the very back, I'm gonna create a panel going down here, about, I wanna say, like two inches wide. So going straight down, I'm going to clip this part away, straight down again. And I'll show you my sectioning here as I clip this. Beautiful. So we have our about two, two and a half inch subsection here. And now I'm going to be holding everything. Firstly, taking my guide at about just under an inch here. That's all gonna depend on your client's density, right? So our First section, we are going to be holding it straight out towards us. It's going to be parallel to the floor here. Now grabbing my shears, we are going to do a, our first guideline. So coming straight out, I'm going to kind of picture where I want this and I want kind of my shortest piece to fall just around like the occipital bone area. 
but that is kind of rough because we are gonna be doing a point cut. So let me tilt this, this way so you can see better here. Now I'm gonna go in and create a nice deep point cut. That first cut is always the most satisfying, right? <laughs> And then I'm going to drop it, kind of see where it is falling, and so you can start to see that we've created a little bit of that shape right here, and I think that is perfect. In fact, I think I wanna take it just a little bit shorter here, just to create a little bit more drama. Beautiful. Now, I am going to take another section and I'm going to bring it up towards that first guideline. So bringing that up, we have our guideline that you can see here and then we have our new hair which is going to be cut into that. So as you can see here, I'm still holding my guideline out horizontal, flat, parallel and this hair is being over directed towards it. So holding that out and now I'm going to be point cutting in the other direction. Now, can anyone tell me why I might want to point cut in the opposite direction that I did last time? So we do that to create basically what we call cross cutting. So it's creating baby kind of X's within the hair. Who here has ever done a haircut and they've been doing a point cut because they want a nice soft diffused result? And when you finish, you realize that all the hair is kind of pushing towards one side, or your client always says, oh, I can get this one side right, but the other one never wants to lay right, especially within a bob. Usually that's because we have only point cutted one direction. I remember when I first realized this, it kind of blew my mind, but we know that short hair does what to, to long hair? It will push the long hair. So if we have these short hairs pushing the long hairs, they are going to want to go in that direction. And when we point cut, we're always going at a slight angle, depending on how much we want to take out, right? And so if we're constantly pushing that angle, it's going to want to push to one side. And so that's why I created cross, that's why we're doing cross cutting right here is because I don't want there to be any direction within the, um, with like internally here. And I'm going to bring all this hair up and it looks like none of that is going to reach here. There's just a few hairs to kind of clean up. Perfect. So we have our base here and now we're going to move on to our next section. So we're not going to create another about like two inch subsection here. And this one is going to go right behind the ear. So I have my finger and I'm putting it right on the bone behind her ear taking this and that's a little bit too wide because I can tell this is going to be way too wide of a section to take. So I'm going to take a little bit out from there and push that forward. Clip that baby away here. Alrighty, so I'm going to grab on to my guideline here from the very edge of it. take my new guideline and I am going to be doing a traveling guide using our first one so which means I am going to be moving that kind of in between the two so make sure I have this first piece and it's a little bit too wide so I am just dropping that out while I create my guideline so I can see him right here and now clipping in now, as you can see here, let me put my hands there, you can really see where I have cut. And I'm really wanting to do that within this haircut because what happens when we cut directly into the hair without too much of an angle? What happens is that we start to just create thinning while creating movement, but you're not going to be able to really see that texture. And so it's really great to be able to like create some movement and something really free flowing in the hair. But in a cut like this, where we are really wanting to see 
more of that hair. And we're wanting to see those cuts. We're wanting to see that definition so our clients can easily, oh, making sure I'm checking my angle here. <laughs> so our clients can really easily also pull out that on themselves. I'm wanting to really create intentional jagged lines within this haircut. Pulling this up. And nice clean cuts here. And this probably won't reach here, but we'll take a look. Yeah, we just got a few hairs to clean up. Beautiful, and we'll move on to that area here where it didn't quite reach. So again, it's taking in that piece that we started in for our guideline. Alrighty, and then cutting in. So I'm pretty much going at like about like a 45 degree angle with my shears. I find that's really the best way to be able to create that drama within the hair and for my client to be able to piece out that texture later. Creating your next section, lifting that up. What are you guys thinking so far? Leave a comment down below if you have had clients asking for the shag or you've been looking for clients to do the shag cut on because it is just so much fun and we can be a little bit more creative a little bit more fun with it as long as we keep in mind our fundamentals which sets us apart so releasing that so now we're starting to see you can really see those kind of pieces already kind of coming out on the side you have that piece coming out here and you can see that texture really come to life in a very defined way. So now moving on towards the front, I'm gonna be slightly over directing this just to protect a little bit of hair around the ear. Perfect. Oh, Cecilia says loving the shape. So fun, right? All right. So I'm taking about, again, just under an inch here because of her density. and slightly over directing that back. And I did drop out some of the hair here just because I knew I wouldn't be able to take that in that section here. So now I'm gonna go back in. Perfect. Take your next section lifting that up and what i'm also doing is now i'm going to start lifting this up more than horizontal because if i were to go kind of parallel the entire time we would have a really big notch here and i'm okay with a little bit because i do want a little bit of that kind of soft shape here but i don't want it too dramatic because i want it to still be very modern and be very applicable for our guests um, because not everyone is going to want something super dramatic. Usually a lot of people like to dip their toe into the trends, right? Perfect. So we'll lift this up a little bit more than horizontal. And taking one more section here and I'm really just letting like a little bit of hair just barely veil over just to leave us a little bit more wiggle room lifting that up and then again cross cutting that in as you can start to see we have a little bit of a um, a little bit more of an angle started but we will go in later on and kind of perfect that in but this just allows us a little bit more wiggle room right so let me twist this here and now we'll move on to our other sides so again I'm gonna create a, another section here tie off the excess finding where my guide is. And again, it's really easy because we have so much of that texture in the hair, right? 
All right. And now I'm going to go in here. So again, I am parallel to the floor and I'm creating a nice deep, about 45 degree angle for my point cuts. Now with my next section, I am point cutting the other direction. Creating that cross cutting technique. Who here has done cross cutting before? It was one of those things, it's so simple, but once I started doing it and implementing it, oh my gosh, it made such a big difference, especially on my bob styles. Because we all love a good point cut, a scissors up technique, but not always, um, but we also wanna create that structure within it. I'm right, gonna take all this hair here see what reaches. Perfect. Awesome. And now moving on to our front section again here. This is going to be, again, slightly over directed back. But actually, even before I do that, I am gonna kind of go around here check my balance out perfect so coming in we are going to over direct this back and cut in that texture now taking our next section we are gonna be lifting this up a little bit further, right? And doing our cross cut. Beautiful. And now with this one more section here, I'm gonna let a little bit of that hair veil over. this a step back here so you can see so we've started to really create this nice texture in here you can already really just start to piece it apart with your hands nice and bulky but now what we're gonna do is we're going to create the top here and this is where honestly is my favorite part of the haircuts here so I'm going to release this top section and I am going to take a just central parting here. So I'm gonna go right at the front. A little too tall for me. <laughs> How to stand on the tip of toes. And now I'm gonna be holding everything up, so I'm just going to lower down my mannequin here a bit so you can see a little bit better. Now I will take about a half inch section as my guideline. So just right at the back of the head here. Perfect. And I'm gonna decide where exactly I want this to go. And this will greatly depend on your clients and exactly what they're looking for, how commercial they want to be, or if they really want to step out of the box. Obviously, the more they want to step out of the box, probably the shorter I would go with this because you can have more drama. But I'm thinking about there is probably good here. Yeah. So we'll kind of pull this down to see where it's falling. And that is falling perfectly for me. And so we will just snip that off. On long hair, I would hold, on long hair would I hold higher while moving it down the internal layers on the side. Yeah, you definitely could. So if you were holding, just like we did at these side sections, what we did to preserve a little bit more of the length is we did hold it higher up than 90 degrees. So let me pull this part here. So we're at these side sections. We want to preserve that length. So you definitely could just hold things up 
longer because what would happen, right? When we have longer pieces traveling up, we are gonna create more and more length because we are over directing, right? That is the beauty of over directing is that we can preserve length where we want it and where we need it and then detail out later what exactly we're looking for. Perfect. Sia says, love that, awesome. All right. So I'm actually gonna jump on the other side here. And I want to find where I have my cut. Perfect. And I am going to take out basically a triangle shaped section. So I'm gonna go down. There you go, I can still see here. I'm going to see where my shortest piece is. Okay, so that's nicely perfect. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm going to slide cut in. Now, how aggressive we're gonna slide cut, again, is going to depend on where the length is and also her density. So we're going to go pretty dramatic because the semanican, we can have fun, right? So I'm going to take that in and as soon as those first little guidelines starts to fall out, that's when I'm going to start cutting and sliding. Put off the rest here. All right, and so you start to see how those layers are falling. But will you, what you'll also notice, if I bring this up a little bit more, is those new layers that we just cut in there, they are starting to fall over top of our internal layers. And that is what's gonna really help create a little bit of that cool factor. And again, being able to piece that out more. Because when we have shorter pieces underneath, it's just basically kind of like um, when we do a pixie cut and we really want to see those pieces on the side and have definition. We shave this so that when the longer hair falls over top, we can really piece that out. Fun, right? So it can also sometimes look a little scary. It's actually super easy and will play to our look later. So I'm going to go in again. And again, I'm creating a triangle shaped section in the back. I'm going to turn her slightly here. I'm going to find where my guideline is. Can you guys see that? Let me pull away a little bit more hair. Perfect. And then as soon as that starts to fall off, we just had that falling out. That is where I'm starting to cut and push through the hair. Let me go again. This is one of my favorite parts to do, and especially I find like the clients love the slide cutting. It just looks so fun for them too. But it's always just important to remember where you are and to really also maintain, um, maintain your tension and the aggressiveness at which you slide cut in. All right, so taking another piece here finding my guideline, barely kind of cutting into my guideline, letting that fall out and cutting through. And so as I slide cut, what I'm also doing is I'm not just kind of taking my shears and pulling them through. I am creating um, baby little, um, baby little cuts. So basically what I like to kind of call fluttering my shears. So it's just barely moving that lower piece here, just the tiniest little bit. And that ensures that we're never kind of tearing at the hair. We're just creating those soft snips to be able to glide through really nicely and also create that fluidity. All right, so now we have this side done. I'm going to create another triangle shaped section. And so you can see that here. I'm going to pull my hair up. I'm going to find where that guideline is. And that's also why I did it very nice and clear. I did not point cut my guideline because I really want to be able to see it. And as well as if there's a little bit of that kind of like choppiness in there, 
We love it, it's the style, but we are getting rid of it each time we go in with our slide cuts. We are just barely kind of taking off the corner of the guideline as well. As that falls, I'm starting to cut. I'm going through. And now creating another section. And so for all of this, I had a traveling guideline. So I was using those pie shaped sections going around the head. If you see me looking down, I just have my comments down there so I can keep this up here nice and free. All right, let's clean that up here. Take our next section. Right, finding that guideline and cutting through. I just noticed I am gleaming right now with a little bit of sweat. I am in Calgary, Canada, where it usually it does not get very hot. So we, a lot of us don't have air conditioning, but on the days that it does, whew, we are in it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to turn this here, and now I'm just going to be more so taking um, panels here down the head. All right, lifting that up, finding my guideline. I'm not seeing my guideline, so I'm going to go in here further to where I remember it was. And there we go, because I cut it nice and bluntly there. I can just now find it once again. So I'm gonna be slightly over directing this back to my previous subsection. And what that is going to do is it's going to, again, over direction gives us length. And that is also going to help give us a little bit of, um, a little bit more bulk to work with at the front because I really wanna make sure that we're feeling very heavy up here. Um, which is really the look with the shag, a little bit more on the kind of uh, jagged edges down at the bottom, but having that heaviness right up top really gives that ultra cool feel. So to create that, we are bringing things back to give us our weight. So I see my little guideline in here and it's starting to get more and more diffused each time I cut. And creating those baby little snips and pulling everything back here seeing whatever is going to reach and not too much just a little cleanup at that front but now you can see this side here I'm gonna bring this up so you can see a little better so you can really see already all of that movement and texture that we can put in the hair just by running our fingers through, that disconnection underneath is really helping us to create that lightness and be able to have a structure over top to work on. How fun is that already looking, right? I love this cut so much. All right, so now we're gonna work on our other side, because as you can see now, if I mess this up, we are still looking pretty darn smooth, right? So let's bring our layering up there. So I'm just going to lower this down so we can see a bit better. Perfect. Our comment's doing beautiful. So we have our back section done and so now I'm moving on to this side panel here. Still kind of pie shaped sections, more so moving towards panels once I start to get to the side of the head. And again, with the same thing, I'm over directing it to my last back section. So I see my guideline right here. I'm gonna move her. And then I am cutting into this. Perfect. I love when I have like a little bit of hair in my hand just to sprinkle like pixie dust, you know? <laughs> All right, taking another section down. Perfect. And again, 
I'm not seeing my guideline here and I want it every single time I am cutting, I want to find my guideline. So I'm going to go in to where I know it is. Here we go, here's some of it and incorporating it into that section. So now you can see we're slightly pulling back and cutting through. Perfect, and now we'll bring that front section all the way back. What do you guys think so far? The slide cutting is definitely one of my favorite parts. So I can see my guideline right there. And I'm just cutting off a little bit of that excess. So now we have that nice texture all throughout and I can start to kind of piece apart with just my fingers here, nothing else. So now it's time to really bring the attitude with this because right now we're looking heavily layered but what's really missing is that deep heavy curd fringe and especially i find curd fringe is one of those things with the rise of tiktok has been the rise of the curtain fringe which has also been the rise of i don't know about your clients but my clients first trying it on themselves um because it looks so easy when other people do it online right but as we know, it's not that easy. And so it is important for our clients to come back to us for that. So I am going to, I'm wanting to create a very like central heavy fringe here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to have a couple hairs, just my very middle section here. So creating the tiniest little uh, triangle shaped section, and I'm going to decide where I want my shortest piece to fall. So. This mannequin has quite a bit of jump here, and so I'm wanting to cut it when it is um, when it is laying how it naturally does. So I'm gonna take this here, placing that into my comb here, so I can lay naturally, but so that I also don't snip my client's face. That's usually ideal. I wanted to start around eyebrows, so I'm just going to kind of cut that in and cross cut that as well. And so we have our first little pieces of our curtain fringe. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create um, this heavy fringe in a very similar way to what we created here in the back with our external layering. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create another triangle. This one still smaller than our traditional fringe triangle. And clean up those sections here. Just because we are doing a, a shag, we still have to have a clean controlled section. So that just helps us out in the long run. So I have, she's quite stiff here, but I have this nice triangle shaped section. I'm gonna tilt this towards me slightly here. Actually, I think I'm gonna bring this on the other side. Yeah, that'll be better. Perfect. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the exact same technique that I did up here. I am gonna look for my guideline. I see my guideline starting to fall out and that's when I wanna start cutting. So I'm going to re-grab that hair again and I'm going to go in As soon as those hairs start falling, that's when I start cutting. So I'm just cutting directly up. Perfect. So I'm starting to create a lot of length here and starting to create that curtain fringe. Now I'm gonna go in with a heavier section and this time I'm going to go in from the recession point two recession points and I'm gonna go not too deep into the back here but I will go a little bit deeper later as I'm finishing so now this is kind of your typical fringe sectioning going high point to high point brush that back a little bit and now pulling all this hair in 
I see where my guide is. And as that's starting to fall out, you can see that little hair here. That is when I am starting to cut. And so I'm gonna push my shears through. Again, I'm fluttering. So we are not ripping the hair. We are just gently fluttering through. And this section is a little larger. So it's taking a little bit more to flutter through. <laughs> All right, you can also already kind of start to see that shape we are creating. And that is all from the over direction that we have going on. And all the over direction is just bringing these side pieces right to the center. So we're cutting everything at center and creating a little bit of like a swoop as we're cutting is going to really create a lot of this heaviness and drama. But again, I wanna go a little bit even more so to kind of get her a little bit more edgy because this is going to be a, a nice sort of curtain fringe right now. But if I go heavier, that's when I'm gonna create a little bit more drama, which of course is so fun within the shag. We love the drama. All right. So now I'm gonna be going all the way to the high point in the back here. really close to where we had our original guideline. I'm going to bring that in. And now taking this hair, a lot of hair to handle in the hands here. There we go. Perfect. And as those shorter pieces start to fall on her face, that's why I know, what time is it? It is time to cut. And so this is a technique that I'll actually also do on any of my clients who just want some face framing too, because a lot of people love the look of a, um, love the look of a curtain fringe, but not everyone is ready to commit to a curtain fringe. So what I've been doing for a lot of my clients, we're kind of in between the two. What we've been doing is just basically creating um, a little bit more face framing. And then I'm showing them how to style it in a way that looks like a curtain fringe. But so basically creating like a faux curtain fringe. So usually I'm just kind of doing a little bit of slide cutting at the front, but then I'm doing that exact same technique where I am taking in all of the hair here and then cutting upwards. I'm just gonna be a lot more gentle, a lot more delicate, and probably start lower down and create less in here. But now you can see that kind of shape starting to pull. We have a lot of weight right here, which is exactly where we want it for that drama here. And so I'm gonna kind of take a look now, both taking a look at it right in front of me, and then also kind of taking a look at how it's starting to look in the mirror um, or for myself, the camera. And so you can kind of start to play with things, see how you're wanting them. And I'm feeling pretty happy with that. I think what I want to do as well is now that I know I've preserved these links, I actually want to go into them a little bit more dramatically. So as you can see here, we have like a little bit of that, but I want to kind of take this little knot out and then also kind of just smooth in not smooth in, but texture in a little bit more like right here. Take just these ends off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to simply pull this hair forward. And then I have snipped out that little bit and I'm just going to slide cut the rest of the hair here and then also give it a little point. And so I can start to see on that side, that is falling a lot better. But in fact, I think we can go even like a little bit more dramatic. What do you guys think? Do it. <laughs> All right. I have my other camera here and I see there's a little bit of a delay. So I'm gonna go in and gently point cut in. And now for these front pieces, I am going a little bit more directly into my section than that 45 degrees. The reason I'm doing that is because this is going to be really easy to piece apart 
and so I don't want to create too much of a jagged edge right on the bottom because this is going to be really easy to create that jaggedness but it's up here where sometimes things get lost that's where I really want to create those jagged edges so here I'm creating more just like a point cut directly in but throughout the base we have that 45 degree angle all right so we're gonna go on this side too and you can see that it's looking cute and it's looking it's looking like the modern version um, and it's looking like or not the modern version but like a more of like commercial version so I just want to edge it up just a little bit but it's a really nice profile that we're starting to create here so again I'm going to take this hair just snip off some bits here look at her head on because even within pieces like this we still want to create balance it is so important to have our balance within our texture so we're, when we're doing this we're doing it more so by feel and less so by each individual hair because we have so much texture it is going to be hard to see each individual hair but now you can kind of see a little bit of those pieces coming through and giving a little bit more of that rocker edge and i am loving that one little finishing detail I really like to do with this cut as well, totally optional, but I like to create a little bit of, um, a little bit more of a forward direction. So we create a lot of cross cutting so she can really wear it either way. But now I wanna show you guys a way to make things push forward. Usually we wanna kinda of like push things back off the face. Um, and so we cut away, but in this, time I want to create some short pieces here to kind of push forward so it naturally wants to push forward because that's how we're going to be styling this look is we want all that heaviness up front right so I'm just going to take a section of hair here and basically I am going to slide cuts this towards myself Now, another way that we can do this, and I'll actually go through in the back here, is I'm going to section this out. And I'm going to create what we call kind of a weave and tease. So I'm going to pop up that hair. And this, we, we created that nice shape in here, but she has a lot of hair and especially back here. So I want to take out a little bit more because it was still starting to look still a little too structured. So I'm going to take some hair here and I'm going to have my shears completely closed and make sure they are not open whatsoever. And I'm going to weave. You guys can see there, perfect. And then I'm just gonna take this weave twist it and then using a scissors down technique I am just going to again be butterflying my shears down starting at the top there this is one of my favorite texturizing techniques because it just creates a little bit of that movement within the hair And it's just another tool for your belt. So I'm gonna put it down here as well because this is looking very, very heavy to me. Because I don't want such a clean part, especially because this is where the hair did not reach when we were up here. So we have all this beautiful texture in here, but we have our baseline a little bit heavy, which could be nice for something a little bit more commercial, but we're going to be a little bit more edgy with this and take off that weight. So I'm gonna go centrally here. I'm going to completely close my shears, weave that out, take my hair and twist it. So this is a very kind of similar idea to how you could use channeling shears, but just with your straight edges. I'm gonna go now on the side here to really etch out those ends, create a little bit more movement. Alrighty. Taking that in, weaving, twisting, and going down. And 
and then once more on the side section here. Push away that extra hair. So you can see this. Now we are going to weave out the hair and then use a scissors down technique, twisting, and then taking this down and fluttering through. So this just helps to give a little bit more of that texture in there um, without creating too much layering. Because down here, I really don't want to have the layers. I have the internal layers right up here, but this is where it didn't reach. And I just wanted to diffuse that baseline just a bit more. And I think we're going to do it one more time on the sides here. What do you guys think of this technique? I think it's so fun. So scissors completely closed. We don't want any accidents happening here. Twist, scissors down, and butterfly those shears in. Take another section. And especially this, like, I can feel this section is quite heavy for my liking. So weaving that in twist and scissors down to cut that in and my scissors to the hair are about like a 45 degree angle perfect so now this is looking a little bit more diffuse a little softer on that bottom so I'm liking that a lot more perfect all right so now we're just gonna kind of go through a visual check here. So we did find a little bit of that weightiness right here. And I'm wanting to just kind of point cut the perimeter. So I'm just gonna go around the head. Point cut that in. Especially where I start to see there is a little point where maybe it has a little bit more bulk. Go around back here. Being very free flowing with it. Inside, beautiful. Awesome, all right, so now we have, I put these down here. Now we have our shag style, but one of the most important pieces of the shag style is how we're going to style this to actually make it look cute, very livable, and, um, and get that drama, especially in the bangs. Because that's one of the problems that I'm having a lot of my clients come back to me with is that they're like, oh, like, I, I love it, but like, I don't know how to style it like you. The fringe is one of the most important parts here. So we're going to finish on that. I'm going to heat up my perfectly polished titanium uh, flat iron here. This one just out just recently. I love it. It is so smooth. And so I have it heated up here and it only takes under 60 seconds to heat up. So it is so easy. I don't have to worry about it, especially I didn't want to have the heat going while I was already sweating, right? So I'm just wanting to create a little bit of movement and texture in here. So I'm gonna section out this nape area, bring up the hair. And now before I go in, what I always wanna do obviously before I touch any hair with any heat tool is using heat production. So we're gonna go in with Moroccan Oil's Perfect Defense. This protects against 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which is crazy, um, way hotter than you should be having it anyways. <laughs> And some of that hair is falling out, so I'm just gonna clip that back up. But I really love this one because it is so weightless in the hair. You can apply it wet, you can apply it dry, and it's for all hair types, all hot tools, which makes it really easy for the consumer too. They don't have to worry too much about application or when they can use it, when they can't. All right, and so I'm just gonna be creating some soft bends within the hair here. So I'm gonna go in with my flat iron and gently twist it and create a little baby curl here. So you start to see that. 
And I'm gonna go now the opposite way and just kind of pulling that through. Now the key is for something like this is I'm wanting to both alternate the direction so it looks very lived in, but I'm also wanting to create very minimal curl, which is why I really love going in with the flat iron for that because I can really be in control of how much curl I get. So I am really pulling down on the hair strand as I am twisting. So really the hair is only getting like a little half or quarter twirl, but it's just enough to kind of create some movement. And I can see here that I created way too much curl here. We're looking a little curly Sue. And so I'm basically just going to kind of tap that out just gently. And now we just kind of have more of that texture in there. So what we're also going to be doing as we are going through the head, I'm going to go kind of up in sections here and I'm going to alternate with kind of creating a little bit of those curls with also some just 3D waves. So I'll show you how to do those as well. So I'm going to take now a piece from my lower session, going back. And I love how this even just like looks like half up right now. You can see that beautiful curtain fringe. This could look super cute just pinned up like this and adding some more texture down there. I don't know, who else gets super excited about like the in-between stages? All right, because we're on to our next section, we don't want to forget our perfect defense. Yes, I'm gonna say my favorite too, just because of how much I don't feel it in the hair. Because I have so many clients who will use heat on their hair, but they're like, Sarah, I really don't want to use heat protection because I hate the feeling of product in my hair. This is completely weightless. And because it's for all hair types, all hot tools, there's no reason not to be using it, right? So, as I spray that globally throughout my section here, I'm gonna take this through and now I'm gonna go in with a wave. So I'm gonna start and I'm gonna look for, I have Moroccan oil on one side and, whoops, oh yes, perfect. So now we are going to clip this in and I'm gonna create a little bit of a half turn and then quickly another half turn. And so you can see that nice soft wave that it just created here. So when we're doing this, we want to make sure that we're being really fluid while we are. So I'm going to take another section here and no bigger than like two inches, just like as we're taking panels in the haircut, anything bigger than two inches becomes a little bit hard to control. So holding this out, creating a half turn in and then a half turn twist, twist, twist going backwards and forwards, sometimes I find moving my body can kind of help me um, direct things a little bit. It can help me remember like, okay, yes, we're going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, but really all it is is the wrist twisting. Again, going into that two inch section here. And you go twist, 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 twist. Cute. And then two more sections of this here. And what I also like to do, because we do have so much texture in here, I like to finish my waves on and in. So I'm pushing the ends in just slightly. All right, grabbing the hair here. Twist, twist rocking the iron backwards and forwards. And it's really important to note that we are never going to be stopping in one position. This needs to be very, very fluid in order for there not to be any kinks, just waves, right? So we have that super cute texture in there and that's looking a little bit heavy. So I'm just gonna kind of pull that out with my fingers a little bit. Perfect, that's better. Because all I want is just a little bit of texture just a little bit of movement going on in the hair. Anything that's too done is not gonna look realistic. So ideally, I really like this on anyone with any sort of curl pattern, whether it be like super light or super heavy, it's really nice to have just a little bit of natural wave or, um, or even extremely curly or coily. It works really well on. Clip that hair up. Protectants, that perfect defense. Spray that 
bring it about six to 10 inches away from the hair all the way through. All right, taking this in, and now I'm just gonna create that soft curl. So I'm going in, and what I'm doing too is I'm going basically directly, sorry, not directly, um, diagonally back around the head here. So, oops, that's part of that section here. And now just gently creating a soft curl and kind of pulling that out on the ends. So you can see that, just a little bit of movement. Now I'm gonna take this piece, we're going away from the face, so now we're gonna to go towards, and again on that kind of diagonal now forward. And sometimes I do want to pull things out before they're completely cooled. And you can already start to see how that's looking, how that's layering on top of each other and being able to see that texture all throughout. All right, going through here. And then just creating that soft, easy, simple curl. I find one of the best ways to kind of create also those just like Instagram-y type um, curls and waves that are really big right now. And you can see a little bit of that disconnection that we pulled out while we were curling, um, is to alternate with curls and waves. It can give a really cute effect here. Curl that a little bit more in. Perfect. Again, just going backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. And pulling that in. Perfect. Two more sections here. Forward, pulling out. It's all in that pull out vein. All right. And then one more piece around the front here. Just creating a little bit of that bend and movement. Perfect. Alrighty, moving up top here. Um, I am, again, perfect fence. You never forget. This it just smells so good too. <laughs> Alrighty, so now we've moved on to around the face here with that curtain fringe. And what I'm going to want to do is I want to take out about that triangle shaped section at that front area here. Grab this and I am kind of holding this down. Let me tilt the head a little bit more so you can see better. Holding this down. And now I'm gonna go in with my iron and twist back and slightly away. This creates that perfect amount of swoop right at that front. So that can be done with both um, a flat iron or a curling iron, just going kind of directly back. But as we're going directly back, we're also kind of pulling forward because I want this to be really flat up top here to kind of help create that little bit more of that drama. I don't want any volume. I want that curve to really more so start at that side. So you can see that's starting to cut in. So I have that piece all good to go. And here, I'm gonna do a little bit of more of that wave. So just going backwards and forwards really simply. Cute. Grabbing the hair here, going, rocking back and forth. And now, because we were doing a little bit more of, um, we were curving in the first time, now this time, I'm really wanting to accentuate these layers and see these kind of popping out. So I'm finishing on an up flip. One of the reasons I really like the perfectly polished um, titanium flat iron for this is because it has these cool touch points right here. So you can hold onto it as you're doing the rocking and you're not gonna burn your hands. <laughs> All right, going in here. 
and rocking that back and forth, ending it on a little bit of a flip. All right, moving right along, just two more sections here. Backwards, forwards. So cute. Oh, Sarah, we just said so cute at the exact same time. Just as your comment popped up, I was saying it too. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're near the side here, so I want to have one more section of that before I move on to my curtain fringe. So grabbing on to my hair here, going in, backwards, forwards. Perfect. And now you can see kind of the difference between um, where we don't have our curtain fringe styled and where we have it. So it's just that perfect amount of polish right up top where even you could do it without even having a fringe in there. But I think later on we'll polish that off a bit more. But I'm going to take the hair here and I can see it from a different angle. And so we're pulling it down and then lifting up and twisting out. And now we did this way too dramatically, and so I wanna show you what happens when it's way too dramatic. It's not a big deal, but we can start to kind of pull that out. But now we kind of have that more dramatic flip. So that kind of gives you more of that like Farrah Fawcett type style, but we wanna bring that out to be a little bit more, um, hang a little bit lower on the face, right? So this is basically just what happens when you let that curl on there a little bit too long. So I'm just gonna do the opposite and that corrects us out here. So now we have that nice shape back in. Perfect. Gonna take a look at her here. Beautiful. Now I wanna go in and start to detail out this style. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, sorry, go in with our texture clay. So this is the Moroccan oil texture clay. It is really good for, honestly, shortcuts to long layers. And my secret weapon is using this on braids, um, especially when I want to create a little bit more texture and volume to a braid. But today, I'm going to take a little piece here. I can see it is more a gray color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub it throughout my hands until it turns nice and clear. So this has bennite clay in it, which is a super nice agent to work with. And so it's gonna give us a nice matte finish. So now I can really start to even like style this fringe a little bit more. So I'm gonna kind of pinch right at that root area to kind of help me. And I can start to pull out where I want it. So I want us to go straight down. So again, I can even like push this product right at that root area going nice and heavy and I'm loving how that's starting to look here yes and in fact I actually want a little bit more product here especially with a shag a little bit goes a long way but it is so much fun to just really go into it so basically I'm gonna just rake my fingers through the hairstyle and then start to push things out and define things so right now I'm just getting the product evenly distributed and then I can kind of polish things off a little bit more. So I have this piece and I want this piece to really stick up a little bit more. And now this is where kind of like the fun part starts where you can really start just to define things out. This was looking a little too nice. So what I do when something's like the bottoms so you can see it's happening here, but I was already doing it down here. When the bottoms are looking a little too nice, what I like to do is I like to um, have a little bit of that product in my hand. So I had it all throughout, I was rubbing all throughout my hands, right? But I'm only using it on my fingertips. So what I do to recharge is I just kind of pull my fingers down. That gets more of that product into my fingers. And so all I'm gonna do for this to create more of that intentional texture, more so like this side, giving that definition, I'm going to basically do like a money motion with my hands. 
So I'm going to go to that bottom and just kind of create a little bit of that money motion. I can start to see a little bit of that definition kind of coming through those edges. I can see where we don't have as much product. So I'm going to recharge on the palms of my hands here and start to kind of pinch and pull out some texture where I want to see it. As well as the, um, the texture clay does have that signature argan oil treatment within it. So it's also hydrating as well, which I really like. So it's, I find then I'm never using it too much and feeling scared that I'm gonna like dry out the hair or create too matte because it's really having a nice um, level of moisture to it as well. Because what's the use of having cute hair if it's not healthy, right? So kind of going around the head here and pinching and pulling some pieces. And now we don't have too much going on in the back here. We can really see where we had that deep wave. So that's where I want to start to add a little bit more of my texture clay. So now I'm going to add a little bit more from my pot here. And again, warming this up in my hands before distributing it. This is one of those perfect products which is like a nice kind of like medium hold that you can really work up however much you want. And again, these bottoms tend to go a little bit too soft for my liking. So I'm gonna kind of pinch and pull that out. And you can start to see, especially in this angle, you can start to see this is where our heaviness is. And that's exactly what we want for that shag to create that heaviness up here and then have it kind of droop down and slim down a little bit more towards the ends. Cute. All righty. And you can see this side as well here. And so what I want to do to finish this cut is I want to go in with my texture spray. So this honestly, in general, has replaced a lot of my hairsprays because I adore working with a texture spray so much because it gives a really soft element of hold, but also can add a little bit of airiness and texture to the hair, which along with kind of that, those beachy waves, everyone loves a little texture, a little movement. So I'm going to shake this up a little bit here and then spray this throughout the head. I'm going to cover her eyes, but it's such a habit even with my mannequins here covering her eyes, bringing that in. I can even define it a little bit more. And what I also like to do is the benefit of working with an aerosol as opposed to our pot here is I can use the power of an aerosol spray in my advantage. So I love this for creating the bulk of it, creating that hold, creating that pieciness. But now I'm wanting to shift things just slightly. And so I'm gonna use the power of the aerosol. So again, what we we're talking about earlier is we really want things to kind of be moving forward. And so what I'm spraying, especially at this fringe section, I'm going to go and directly spray in and use the power of that aerosol to just kind of spray that down, getting that fringe to lay nice and flat right at the center part. And kind of go through the rest of the hair here. I'm loving how this is shaping out. Add a little bit more over on this side here. And you really just kind of take your fingers in and crunch in exactly where you want to see things. And now I don't like this piece kind of flowing because it's, it's really a fine balance between creating something that is very, uh, something that's very, textured but also not messy so we want intentional texture right so i'm gonna stand behind her here and this is why i also um i also do this in my salon because my salon has white walls and i have um i will always wear black so if they have blonde hair i can stand behind and see that really clearly but if they have darker brunette hair it's really nice to be able to see all of our silhouette here. All right, perfect. I am loving how this is looking. What do you think, guys? Um, I love their texture spray. It's amazing. I use it at my salon. Also great job. Love it. Thank you so much, Sarah. Right, honestly, the texture spray is probably one of our best-selling products. It, I am just so in love with it because it's the perfect amount of texture too. 
breaks. I've definitely used some that were a little too much, a little too heavy, and the hair ended up getting messy instead of textured, which as we were saying is such a fine balance, right? But here we go. Here is our Joan Jet inspired um, Jagged Jet haircut. I hope you guys enjoyed so much. It was such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for investing in yourselves. And thank you so much, Salon Republic, for having me. I had so much fun. Um, if you want to, so you guys can follow me on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. I'm at Sarah Claire Hair, at Sarah Claire Hair as well as make sure to follow Moroc Noel at Moroc Noel Pro on Instagram. They are constantly reposting stylist work, and especially if you recreate any of their looks, especially like the Jagged Jet and using any of their products, always make sure to tag them for a chance to be um, chance for you featured, as well as a ton of free education there as well. So it's a perfect resource to get free education, inspiration, and as well as they have reopened their New York Academy, which is so exciting. But I, for me, I am in Canada, so I'm not able to go. And so what they've also created for a lot of us who are not able to travel at this time, they've also put their New York education online so you can go to www.moroccanoilprofessionals.com you can sign up there and they have some incredible both artistry and business classes up there so you can check that out and enjoy but overall thank you guys so much for tuning in and again if you showed up late this is going to be on the replay so make sure to watch the replay to make sure you get all the style from start to finish Thank you so much and have a great week. Bye.